Can you find the airplane factory in this photo? Better yet, why would you take a factory like this and make it look like this? We're going to tell you in Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. At the beginning of World War II, there were approximately 40 aircraft manufacturers located on the West Coast, East Coast, and Midwest in the United States. On the East Coast, you had uh, famed companies like Grumman and Republic. Republic in Farmingdale, New York was building the P-47 Thunderbolt. And here in this close-up, we see the roof of the plant painted with camouflage. Uh, this was to deal with the potential threat of an enemy attack uh, from Europe, although it was highly doubtful that aircraft at that time could have reached the United States with a payload and returned. However, they considered the threat significant. In the Midwest, that threat was mitigated by the geography, but on the West Coast, the threat was considered quite high because enemy attack from the Pacific uh, could have been uh, assisted by uh, an enemy bringing aircraft closer to the West Coast on a fleet of aircraft carriers. The three major industries uh, that brought aviation to Southern California uh, in the beginning of the 20th century was agriculture, entertainment, and of course, aviation. Here we see the beginning of the 1929 Women's Air Derby from Santa Monica, California to Cleveland, Ohio. In this close-up, we can see Amelia Earhart next to her Lockheed Vega. Santa Monica Airport was also home to the Douglas Aircraft Company. In the 1930s, the plant looked like this. And the aircraft they were building were such aircraft as the Dolphin Amphibian, the DC-2 Airliner, which was featured in the movie Bright Eyes, starring Shirley Temple, who sang Good Ship Lollipop aboard the airplane and the DC-3 seen in Hangar 1 with Donald Douglas posing with his prized 1937 Buick. The DC-3 changed air travel forever and created modern air transportation as we know it today. But as war clouds uh, gathered over Europe in the late 1930s, the DC-3 was converted to the C-47 military transport. Also uh, in that time period, Douglas was building the A-20 Havoc light bomber. And here we see a really good representation of the percentage of women in the workforce, the classic Rosie the Riveter. Other aircraft included the B-23 Dragon. By now, wartime production was at an all-time high in Santa Monica. And here we see the company headquarters. And I thought I'd give you a little flavor of what Santa Monica was like in the early 1940s. This is the classic California bungalow that so many of the company employees uh, lived in. Here we see a company nurse with a brand new 1941 Ford Woody wagon. And there were even good humor ice cream trucks across the street on Ocean Park Boulevard when the company employees took a break. But again, the plant from the air was identifiable and this created a problem. So in the early 1940s, Donald Douglas tasked his chief engineer, Frank Colbaum, and renowned architect H. Roy Kelly with camouflaging the entire factory. Set designers from Warner Brothers Studios in nearby Culver City assisted in creating this full-scale mock town to hide the entire plant when viewed from the air. This neighborhood of lightweight wood frame houses was constructed using nearly 5 million square feet of chicken wire stretched across more than 400 giant poles. Here we see a close-up of a walkway and a house. Included were fences, garages, clotheslines, and countless pieces of fake foliage made from twisted wire and chicken feathers spray painted green to look like leaves. Note the two cars in the street at upper right. Here we see real cars on the real street below a section of the plant. Hangar 1, seen here during construction of the XB-19 Hemisphere bomber, uh, was the plant's tallest building and became a hillside under this convincing cityscape. You notice the hangar's ventilators in the center of the photo. 
company employees actually took shifts up on the roof or on top of this mock town. Uh, women were clang, uh, hanging clothes on clotheslines. Here we see an employee trimming the hedges, sunbathing on the fake lawn. But what appears to be a suburban city in this photo is actually the life-size replica mounted above the Douglas plant. Can you find the factory? It's right here. This area was so well disguised that both Douglas and military pilots had difficulty finding the airport, much less the runway seen here. To solve that problem, signal men were stationed at the end of the runway, waving giant red flags for the pilots to see. At Boeing up in Seattle, uh, they constructed a town, but it wasn't connected to a residential area as it was in Santa Monica. So this is the Do Boeing plant at the end of the war. They were building uh, the B-29 Super Fortress, which is seen here. In Burbank, California, Lockheed Plant 1 was building the P-38 Lightning. And uh, set designers from the Walt Disney Studios nearby helped construct a mock town above the Lockheed plant. But unlike Douglas, where it was uh, situated on uh, wiring and poles, uh, this uh, town was constructed directly on the roof of the plant buildings. At the end of the war, the Douglas plant was reconfigured back to its original uh, appearance, as you see here. And the C-54 Skymaster military transport became the DC-4 commercial airliner. C-54s went on to distinguish themselves in the famed Berlin airlift in 1948, but that's a story for another video. So there you have it, how Douglas hid their plant during World War II under a convincing fake town. An interesting story of ingenuity and American perseverance in World War II. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Mashad. As always, we'd like to thank the good folks and entities that help us make these videos, the Donald Douglas Library and the Museum of Flying, both in Santa Monica, California. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my lovely wife, Sherry, who came up with the concept of hiding aircraft factories that led to the creation of this video. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and until next time, take care.